Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 11 of our podcast, Kids Explorers. We're so excited that you're joining us on our journey to explore and discover new things. You might remember that in our last episode, we explored how aviation started. We learned about the first powered aircraft and its inventors, the Wright brothers. We explored Amelia Earhart, who was one of the earliest female aviators in the world. Her passion for flying and her accomplishments have inspired future generations of women to enter the field of aviation. After learning about Amelia Earhart, we wanted to come up with another great topic. So today, we will be exploring a topic that I absolutely love. Who wants to fill us in on our plan for today? Me, me. I'm so excited for today's topic. I was waiting all week for Sunday to come so we could explore it. Today we will be learning about the Neanderthals. What are Neanderthals? Isabella, before I tell you who the Neanderthals were, I want to suggest that we visit Professor Smarty Pants at his lab. Professor has something really cool that could help us understand this topic a bit better. Oh, I love this idea. Me too. I can't wait to learn about this. To the cars! We're here. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's go in. I hear footsteps, which can only mean one thing. It's Sunday, and my friends are here to learn. Hi, Professor Smarty Pants. Hello, friends. Welcome back to my lab. I'm happy that you guys are here. So, what are we all exploring today? Professor, we came today because we really want to learn about another really interesting topic, the Neanderthals. Now, Mommy and I know a little bit about Neanderthals, but I don't think that Isabella knows much. So it would be great if we could explore who they were in order to help Isabella understand them better. That's a great plan. I love that you guys chose this topic because this is one of my favorite ones. Oh, wait a minute. I actually have something really cool I'd like to show you, which could help us understand who the Neanderthals were. I'm just going to get it. Ta-da! Meet my friend Sam. What is that? Or should we say, who is this? This is Sam, the skeleton. Sam is very special and fragile because he's a little old. How old is he? Sam is about 100,000 years old. 100,000 years old? Are you kidding? Kind of. Sam himself isn't 100,000 years old, but he was built based on real bones excavated by archaeologists. Those bones really were 100,000 years old. So many new words today. What is excavate and what is archaeology? I can explain the first word. Excavate means to dig up dirt to uncover or find something. And archaeology is the study of human history from the objects that are left behind. Sounds confusing, right? Let me explain. For many years now, scientists have been looking for and finding different objects that belong to people who lived before us. They are able to find these objects by excavating or digging up areas in which people used to live. The objects they find help us understand how those people used to live, what tools they used, what cultural and religious practices they had, and so much more. Wow, that sounds so complicated. But how can scientists figure this out? Archaeologists study the objects they find in order to understand the people that they belong to. An example of this is the Egyptian pyramids. Through excavations, archaeologists found objects that belonged to the ancient Egyptians, such as old works of art, dishes, and bones of ancient people, which are also called fossils. These objects explained a lot about the Egyptian language, culture, and practices. That's right, and just like those bones, the bones of our friend Sam's skeleton told scientists a lot about him. When scientists dug up the original skeleton of Sam, they saw that his bones looked very similar to human bones. 
but they weren't exactly human. Wait, this is so confusing. How did they know he wasn't human? You see, fossils can tell scientists a lot about a species, things like their size, age, diet, and much more. When they studied his body, scientists noticed that Sam was not as tall as humans, but his bones are broader than ours. They also saw that his skull and brain were slightly bigger than modern-day humans. Scientists figured out that Sam was very similar to human, but was more like a very close relative. Professor, this makes me wonder: Are we the first group of humans, or were there other groups before us? Great question. To explain this properly, I think we have to back up a bit. Let me show you something on the portal window machine, which will help us understand this better. Professor, what are we looking at? The portal window machine is showing us the area of modern-day Ethiopia, a country on the eastern part of the continent of Africa. Wow, it's beautiful! Hey, look! I see a chimpanzee over there. That's right. These are chimpanzees, but what we are seeing happened a very long time ago. How long ago? The chimpanzees on the screen are from about 4.4 million years ago. What? That's wild. But why do we need to go back so far? Well, you see, about 4.4 million years ago, something very interesting happened. Around this time in East Africa, a new species called the Australopithecus was born. This species was very similar to chimpanzees and most likely evolved from this distant relative. This was very important evolution because this group was the very first group in the family tree of modern-day humans. Whoa! Information overload. This is all incredible. I agree. But can someone explain to me what evolution means? Evolution is a theory that all living things today come from an earlier form of life. Let me explain. Chimpanzees have existed long before the time of the Australopithecus species, but around 4.4 million years ago, some changes started to happen to a small group of chimpanzees. These changes did not happen quickly. They took many generations and years to happen. This new group started to have some characteristics which were different from those of the chimpanzees. That's right. Some things set this new group apart from their chimpanzee ancestors. One of the main new characteristics of this new group was that unlike other apes who walked on all fours, the Australopithecus were bipedal. This means that they walked upright on two legs instead of all four. In some ways, though, this group of early humans was still more similar to chimps than to modern-day humans. For example, the size of their brain did not grow much from that of the chimps. It is believed that they have been slowly evolving and changing, but their brains and thinking abilities were still closer to those of their ape ancestors. A characteristic that was different from the apes, though, was that Australopithecus species had smaller canine teeth. And larger back teeth than those of the apes. This was more similar to modern-day humans' teeth. Wow! But wait, what do the Australopithecus have to do with Neanderthals? The Australopithecus species was just the first point of human evolution or change from ape to human. Between that point and today, our species has evolved many times, creating about twenty different and distinct species of humans. And even today, humans continue to evolve all the time, just like all other animals. That's right. Over time, ancient human species started to look more and more like modern-day humans. Their brains and skulls grew larger, which means that they were becoming smarter. Their teeth changed to resemble ours. They started to walk more and more upright, and of course, they started to lose more body hair. And this brings us to today's topic: the Neanderthals. Neanderthals are species of human which lived just before modern-day humans. Wait a minute, that's not entirely true. I learned that Neanderthals actually lived at the same time as humans. 
We are both right. You see, Neanderthals are thought to have lived somewhere between 200,000 and 40,000 years ago. Around that time, they became extinct. Modern-day humans, who are scientifically called Homo sapiens, first appeared in the world around 160,000 years ago. So humans and Neanderthals did live at the same time at one point, but Neanderthals are an older species than ours. That's fascinating. I read somewhere that one of the differences between the Neanderthals and their ancestors is that the Neanderthals are the first group in the human family tree to move out of Africa. They moved around, eventually settling in the European and Asian continents. They did, and these are the continents where archaeologists have been able to find the fossils of Neanderthals. Finding their bones helps scientists to understand who the Neanderthals were and how they lived. And boy, did they find a lot of interesting information. For example, they found that the Neanderthals were shorter than humans, but had broader bodies. This helped them to adjust and cope better with the very cold climate that they lived in. Their shorter bodies allowed them to keep heat better and for longer periods of time than modern-day humans. That's right. Because of the cold climate they lived in, Neanderthals had some other characteristic that helped them survive better. For example, they had wider noses than modern-day humans. This allowed them to better heat up the air that they breathe in. They also generally had more body hair, which gave them the added layer of warmth. Professor, from what you guys described, it sounds like Neanderthals actually looked pretty similar to humans. You're right. Physically, they looked very similar to modern-day people, but the similarities don't end there. Archaeologists have been able to uncover many ways in which our species are similar. For example, because of their large brains, the Neanderthals were very intelligent. Like us, they lived in family units and cared for each other. They took care of the young and old members of their families, and when someone in the family died, they would bury them much like humans do today. The Neanderthals also used fire for things like keeping warm and cooking meals, much like modern-day humans. They also made and were close to keep them warm in the cold weather. Wait, where did they find clothes? You see, when Neanderthals hunted an animal for food, they tried to use up the entire animal for all possible purposes. One of these purposes was to make clothes from the animal's fur. This fur was very warm and served as protection from the cold weather. And what did they do with the animal's bones? Great question. Neanderthals did something that previous humans have never done. They used the bones of the animals which they hunted to carve out weapons like spearheads. They also used the bones for creating jewelry. They were actually the first human group to wear jewelry. But whose bones did they use? I know this. Neanderthals most often hunted animals in groups. Their hunting style was similar to that of a wolf pack. They would take turns running to separate smaller and weaker animals from their herds and would attack and kill their prey together. And since they hunted in groups, they were able to target larger animals like mammoths, wild horses, bulls, and others. From what you're telling me, I don't know why Neanderthals became extinct. I agree. It sounds like they were very smart and figured out how to live in a difficult climate. They were very smart, but unfortunately, that was not enough to keep them safe from problems. Around the time of their extinction, Neanderthals began to struggle with finding food. At this time, modern-day humans moved to areas in which they lived which meant that now more people were hunting a small group of animals. Unlike Neanderthals, though, humans had more sophisticated hunting tools, which meant that they were more successful than the Neanderthals in finding food. Now I understand. Without food, Neanderthals eventually died and became extinct. That's right. Around 40,000 years ago, this group of highly intelligent humans became extinct. Their extinction meant that modern-day humans became the dominant group. Our ability to create better weapons, live in better shelters, create better clothing, and so much more allowed us to thrive and do as well as we have. This is really amazing. 
It's incredible to know that this group existed at the same time as our ancestors. I want to tell you something that really shocked me. Scientists have been studying both Neanderthals and modern-day humans for many, many years. To my biggest surprise, they found that today's humans share about 1-2% to of their DNA with the Neanderthals. This means that at some point, humans and Neanderthals mixed and created families together. Wait, you want to tell me that my very, very, very distant grandfather was a Neanderthal? That's just crazy. That's right. Until this information was discovered, it was thought that there were two separate species. But according to science, around the time of the extinction of the Neanderthals, the two species merged together. And today's humans are a product of this. Wow, this is really hard to believe. Science is incredible. Imagine if scientists would not have uncovered all this information. We would have lost a lot of knowledge. Absolutely. And the good news is that science does not rest. We are constantly learning new information. In a few years, we might learn even more about this incredible group of early humans. Amazing. Professor, thank you so much for teaching us all this incredible stuff about the Neanderthals and all early humans. Wait, guys. Before we end, we need to come up with next week's topic. I have an idea. This week... I lost two of my teeth. This got me thinking of why humans lose teeth. Can we explore this? Great idea. Yes, I love this idea. Friends, join us again next Sunday as we explore why children lose their teeth. Professor, thank you so much for helping us explore the history of humans and most importantly, everything to do with the Neanderthals. We really hope that you liked today's episode. We would be so excited if you would share our podcast with all your friends who you think would like to join us on our explorations. We always look forward to hearing from you about any feedback and suggestions for what you'd like us to explore in future episodes. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Explorers Podcast. In the meantime, if you liked our episode today, we would be so excited if you could give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other platform that you listen to us on. It would mean so much to us, and it would really help our podcast grow. And this is it. The...